Buenos dias, year 11. Welcome back to McGrathematics, the fastest growing YouTube channel in my entire house. We're going to start off today's lesson with a flashback question. It's from the 2012 Advanced Maths HSC exam. For two marks, differentiate 3 plus e to the 2x, all to the power of 5. Pause the video, see if you know how to approach this one. Okay, hopefully when you see a function to a high power and we're being asked to differentiate, your initial response should be, I need to be using the chain rule here. So we're going to apply the chain rule. We're going to bring the 5 down the front to multiply. We're going to take one off the power and now we need to multiply our answer by the derivative of what's inside the bracket. Now derivative of 3 is 0. Derivative of e to the 2x from one of our previous lessons is going to be e to the 2x multiplied by the derivative of the power, which is 2. So our derivative is 2e to the 2x. We can put that at the front with the 5 and turn it into a 10e to the 2x, and there is your full marks answer. So you'd be getting one mark if you applied the chain rule, and you'd be getting one mark if you correctly differentiated e to the 2x, bringing you up to two marks. Okay, for today's lesson, we are learning all about logarithms. Now, you may have seen a little bit of logarithms in year 10, but um, potentially not. So we're going to start today from scratch. I'm going to try and go as slow as I can because I remember first learning logarithms when I was in year 12 and I found them really, really confusing. So I'm going to try and help you not be as confused as I was. Let's see how we go. Okay, to talk about logarithms, uh, in my mind, the best way to approach it is by talking about inverse operations, which is what you've been learning about um, ever since you started solving equations in year 7 and 8. Inverse operations are essentially just opposites. For example, um, the inverse operation of taking a number and adding 2 to it, the inverse would be taking the number and subtracting 2. The reason we know these two operations are inverses is because if we apply them both, we get back to where we started. So adding 2 and subtracting 2 just gets you back to your initial number. So plus and minus are inverses. Another one you're probably already aware of is that multiplying, so 2 times x, is the inverse of x divided by 2. Because once again, if we apply both, if we take x and we double it and then we halve it, we get back to where we started. So multiply and divide our inverse operations. Another pretty familiar one for you guys would be uh, the process of squaring a number. And what do you think the inverse of squaring is? Well, it's of course going to be taking the square root. And if we take a number and we square it and we square root it, we usually get the initial number if we're not talking about negative numbers because that just makes things more confusing for today. All right, now the final row is where things are going to get interesting. So another operation we can think of. So in the previous line, we had a number raised to the power of two. For our last operation, we're going to be taking two and raising it to the power of a number. And so if this is an operation, it must have an inverse that could undo what's happening here. And there is an inverse operation. It's really weird. It looks like this. It's called a logarithm of base 2 of x. Okay, so the inverse operation of 2 to the power of x is log base 2 of x is how we say this. And log being short for logarithm. Okay, the logic here is that if we take log base 2 of 2 to the power of x, these two operations are inverses. They're going to cancel each other out and leave us with x as our final answer. Okay. So for the next few lessons, whenever you see a logarithm, I just want you to think, well, a logarithm is just the opposite of being raised to a power, essentially. It's a very simple way of looking at it to start us off. Okay, so let's talk about um, where we might need logarithms. So for this first example, we are trying to figure out what value of x is going to solve the equation. We have 10 to the power of x, and the answer is 100. So that one's not too challenging. Hopefully you can look at that and say to yourself, well, I know that 10 squared is equal to 100, so x must be equal to 2. It's not very challenging. We can solve that just by inspection and by basic knowledge, hopefully. A more challenging question as an alternative could be solve for x. 10 to the power of x is equal to 20. So we know 10 to the power of 2 is 100, and we know 10 to the power of 1 is 10. So it's probably going to be somewhere between 1 and 2, but we don't know what it is. We cannot solve this by inspection if you're a normal person. So to solve this equation, we would need to involve logarithms. We need to say to ourselves, well, if I'm trying to solve this equation, I need to get the x out of the power because I want to end up with my final answer being x equals something. 
So the way we're approaching this is we're trying to get rid of 10 to the power. So we've got to do the inverse operation of 10 to the power, which is log base 10. Of course, because it's an equation, we'll do it on both sides. Now log base 10 and 10 to the power, they're going to be inverse operations. These two are going to cancel each other out and leave us with x. And so our solution is x equals logarithm base 10 of 20. And this is something that we can uh, compute with a calculator, which we're going to talk about later. The answer is about 1.3. So if you put into your calculator 10 to the power of 1.3, you'll get an answer pretty close to 20. So there you go. That's why we need logarithms, because we need to solve integer equations like this. Oh, sorry, we need to solve exponential equations where the answer might not be very nice. All right, so logarithmic form. Another way of writing y equals a to the power of x this equation can be rearranged if we involve logarithms. So another way of writing this equation, the way we're gonna picture this is, think about if we took both sides of this left-hand equation, and on both sides, we did log base a. On the left-hand side, we would get log base a of y. On the right-hand side, if we do log base a, it's gonna cancel out the a to the power. It's gonna leave us with x, okay? So these letters are all corresponding. So this y right here is the answer, it's the equals. Um, the thing at the bottom of the logarithm is the logarithm, that's not a word, logarithm is the base, which is the base of the power. And over here, the thing by itself is the power from the original question. So we call that BAP, base answer power. That's what some people find useful. I think uh, this next way of remembering is a bit more logical for me personally, but everybody's different. When I see a logarithm, this is what my brain does. If you give me log base A of Y is equal to X, um, I just think to myself, all right, this just means that this right here, the base to the power of this is equal to this. So my brain can translate this equation right here into the one down the bottom. A to the power of X equals Y. So it's like a circle, okay? We're going to be doing that a lot of times in this video, and hopefully towards the end you'll be getting more comfortable and you have a better idea of how to rearrange a logarithm into an exponential equation. Okay, let's do a few examples to uh, get us comfortable with the idea of a logarithm. So we're trying to find the value of x, and x is equal to log base 9 of 81. So the easiest way to make sense of this is to rearrange it to turn it into an exponential equation, which we are more comfortable with, as opposed to a logarithmic equation, which is very confusing at first. So we're going to use that trick that I showed you in the last slide. For this equation right here, we're going to say this to the this is equal to this. So we're going to write 9 to the power of x is equal to 81, okay? This is the rearranged form of this logarithmic expression right here. 9 to the power of x is equal to 81. And now this equation is a nice easy one. We can solve it by inspection because we know 9 squared is equal to 81, so x must be equal to 2. So if we blocked out the x for a second and I just asked you, what is the value of log base 9 of 81? That's just a really confusing way of me asking you, 9 to the power of what gets you an answer of 81, okay? Let's do the next one. We've got log base 5 of 125 is equal to x. Once again, we'll use our trick to write it as an exponential equation and see if that is easy to solve. So we're going to have 5 as the base, so 5 to the power of x is equal to 125. This to the this equals this. Okay, now can we solve this by inspection? 5 to the power of something equals 125. Well, what do you know? 125 is 5 cubed, so x is equal to 3. Okay, same trick for c. So we're going to rewrite this logarithmic equation, or this expression, as 4 to the power of x is equal to 64. This to the that equals that. Okay, now is 64 a power of 4? Well, 16 is 4 squared, and then if we times it by 4 again, we get 64. So once again, the answer is 3, because 4 to the power of 3 is equal to 64. Okay, and for question D, it's a bit of a trickier one. So again, we're going to use the same method. We're going to write 4 to the power of x is equal to 2. Base answer power. Whoops, spoiler. Okay, now we're asking ourselves, 4 to the power of something gets you an answer of 2. Well, keep in mind that uh, 2 is the square root of 4, yeah? And you remember how we do square roots as um, indices or as an index? 
we have to use a fraction. So we'd be doing four to the power of half. This equation is gonna get us the square root of four, gives us an answer of two. So x equals a half makes this equation make sense, which I kind of ruined for you, sorry. Okay, let's do a few more. All right, for this first one, we've got log base seven of one is equal to x. So we're gonna rewrite it as an exponential equation. We're gonna write seven to the power of x is equal to one. Okay, seven to the x equals one. Now, seven to the power of what gets you an answer of one? Well, if you're familiar with your indices, you'll recall that anything to the power of zero always gives us an answer of one. So the answer for x is just zero. Seven to the zero is equal to one. Okay, question G, once again, we'll start with our base. Base to the power of answer is equal to subject, okay? Two to the three is equal to x. And then straight away we can get the answer for x because we can just do two to the power of three is gonna get us eight, and then we've got x, we've solved it. Okay, H, once again, we're gonna go base, we're gonna go x to the power of two is equal to 25. Okay, x to the two is equal to 25. And now, this is where we've got to be a bit careful because normally when we get to an equation like this, I've trained you guys well enough to say that five wouldn't be the answer. We would be doing positive or negative five because of course, negative five squared is also 25. Now we're gonna talk more about this in later lessons, but for now you're gonna to have to believe me that logarithms are only gonna work when the, when the base is a positive number and when the subject is a positive number. So we can't do log to the base of um, negative five, it doesn't really make sense. We also couldn't do a logarithm of a negative number. So even though this equation here does have two solutions, only one of them is valid for a logarithm and that's the positive one. So we're gonna say x equals five for now, we're going to disregard the negative solution and when we start sketching logarithms, I'll explain why that's the case. Okay, now for question I, once again, we've got the base, we've got x to the power of a half is equal to three. And so what number to the power of a half gets you an answer for three? Well, like we said before, a power of a half is a square root. So what number, when you square root it, do you get three? The answer is nine. Well done if you figured that out before I spoiled it for you. All right, sweet as, let's move on. So now the confusing thing of, or the inconvenient thing about logarithms is that there are lots of different types of logarithms. There's log base two, there's log base five, there's log base nine so on and so forth. However, our Casio calculators that we use in uh, at our school only can do two different types of logarithms. The first one is log base 10. Okay, so on your calculator, you'll see a button right here, it just says LOG. What that actually means is log base 10. I don't know why it doesn't say base 10, it seems kind of confusing, but it is. Okay, that one there is log base 10, but it just says log. And the one next to it is actually also a logarithm. So that actually isn't an IN, it's actually an LN. Now that L and N stand for logarithm natural or the natural logarithm. The natural logarithm is how we refer to the logarithm with base E. And so remember E from the previous lesson, magic number 2.718. So when your logarithm has E as a base, it's called the natural logarithm and the shorthand is LN. So when you press that LN key, what your calculator is actually doing is logarithm base E of that number, okay? Moving on. Okay, so later on in the course, we're gonna obviously need to do logarithms with other bases in our calculator. There is a bit of a workaround to it. It's called changing the base and it'll be covered in uh, the next video. For now, we're not gonna stress because I don't wanna put too much in the first video and overwhelm you. Let's just move on with a few more examples to get more comfortable with the idea of logarithms. So first one is we are going to evaluate the value of ln5. Now, all we have to recognize here is that ln is a function that we can use in our calculator. So if you have your calculator nearby, can you please see if you can press ln, put a five in and then shut the bracket and press equals. If you do that correctly, you should get a number around 1.6 or 1.609, etc. Okay, cool, so ln we actually can do with our calculator. Log base five, we can't do with our calculator, so we're gonna have to use our brains, unfortunately. So let's think. When we're being asked logarithm base five of one, what it's really asking us is five to the power of what gets you an answer of one. 
What do you reckon? Five to the power of something gets you an answer of one. We've actually already answered a question like that in an earlier question. Uh, the answer was zero because anything to the power of zero gets you an answer of one. So what we can conclude from this is that it doesn't matter what the base is, logarithm of any number, if the subject is one, the answer will always be zero. Okay, log one is always zero, regardless of what the base is, because anything to the power of zero is one. Okay, moving on. Question C, log base five of five. So again, this is asking us, five to the power of what gets you an answer of five? Five to the what gets you five? Well, that would be five to the power of one. So the answer is one. Okay, what we can conclude from this is that if your base and your subject of the logarithm are both the same number, the answer will always be one. So when these two match, one is your answer. Okay, D and E, we've got to be a bit clever. Now we're saying to ourselves, logarithm base five of five to the power of two. Now, what did I say at the very start of the lesson happens when you do log base five of five to the something? Think about it. Well, log base five and five to the something, these are inverse operations. So if you do them both at the same time, they should cancel out and leave you with the leftover two. That's what happens here. The log base five and the five to the power, they cancel each other out and we're left with the two because they are inverse operations. Okay, now the good thing about inverse operations is it doesn't usually matter in which order you do them. So if you do plus two and then minus two, you get the same answer as if you did minus two and plus two. Why am I saying that? Because in this last one, we have log base five and we have five to the power. So it's the same question as D, it's just in a different order. But because log base five and five to the power are still inverse operations, these two are gonna cancel out, leaves us with the two left over. Okay, so log base five or log base anything and that same number to the something is getting really confusing. But if the, if the numbers match up, they are inverse operations and they cancel out is what I'm trying to say. Sorry if I ever complicated it. All right, so some really useful properties that we kind of just covered with those examples. Log base something to the something is always gonna be one, okay? When the two numbers match here, one is always the answer. When the subject of your logarithm is one, like we said, the answer is always zero. A to the power of zero is equal to one, regardless of what A is. Okay, like we said, logarithm of base number and the subject is the same number, these two operations are inverse and they cancel out and leave us with the X. And it's the same thing if you do it in reverse order. So log base A of A to the X and A to the power of log base A of X, which sounds really confusing, but they're actually the same thing. Okay, A to the power and log base A cancel out, leaves you with X. Okay, that's gonna do it for today's lesson. There's plenty of practice questions for you guys in 804. Hit me up if you need some more help uh, with any of the questions. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.